Namaste everybody. Irina here. Um, thank you for joining and welcome to this video. Uh, the last video of this series on the chakras or the energetic um, centers in the astral uh, body. So um, I invite you to take a cross-legged seated position on your mat, uh, hopefully somewhere that you can find a quiet space in the house um, where you can be left by yourself and not being disturbed for about 25 to 30 minutes. So Sahasrara chakra is the seventh chakra in the body and uh, also known as the head chakra. It's located in the crown of the head. When we say raising the energy to the crown chakra and when we open up through that chakra it means that we're obtaining a spiritual enlightenment, um, bliss, consciousness, um, there are different terms to describe it. Be able to connect um, to that chakra and raise the energy. Um, it's really important to have all the lower chakras, all the six chakras, balanced and um, opened. So uh, it could be a very long journey and I would like you to remind that yoga is a lifelong journey. This video will be um, slightly slower paced, uh, probably more restorative, um, more a yin energy like um, flow. We will start actually in the corpse pose or Shavasana. So I'd like you to lay flat on the mat. I'm making sure that you've got no obstructions. I'd like you to move your arms slightly away from the body and position your palms out. So allow the feet to flop out. So your shoulder blades, if you need to wiggle, just finding that space where you can sink and relax into the back. Your gaze is closed. So let's focus on practicing of awareness of the whole body learning to listen to the body, the language of the body, allowing the facial muscles to be soft, notice the rise and fall of the chest and the belly and start engaging with the breath. So we are making your inhalation slightly longer. You can pose at the end of your inhale and on the exhale, allowing the long exhalation. Making sure that there is no tension in the upper body your arms are soft and relaxed. The fingers are slightly curled up, curled in. Bring awareness into the crown of the head. And just stay focused on the crown of the head. We're not setting any expectations. We are not trying to create the attachment to a certain feelings that you wish to feel or experience. So we're just being aware of the crown of the head without any judgments, without any labels, not bringing any concepts to the body. Your toes are soft, the fingers are soft. And let's start introducing movements into the wrist. 
So start circling in and out. Perhaps you want to open up your gaze. And let's gently draw the right leg towards the chest, bringing your hands onto the right shin and gently press into the shins. And you can lift the head slightly off the floor, point your toes. Now we're bringing the right thigh closer to the chest. And let's swap and change to the other side. So you're pressing and you're trying to get your thigh closer to the body. And then bringing the extended leg towards the chest. And we're going to start circling through the hips. So making a round movements in and out. And then let's bring the arms inside of the legs and we're gonna hook the big toes with middle and extended finger and let's open up. Open up the legs to the sides, maybe going to the, just rolling into the left and then the right side. I'm starting already engaging with that Ujjayi breath. So restricting the back of the throat. And then bringing both of the heels together and we're going to try to rock forward. It may be that a couple of times, make it a couple of turns to make that rock forward. And when you're rocking forward, maybe just trying to find the balance here. And let's open up one leg, your left leg. close and open up the other leg keeping your chest forward trying not to round through the back and if you're finding that you are rounding here I'd like you to try and bring your chest forward and bring your shoulder blades slightly back and then drop both of the legs forward Move the heel slightly away from the groin, inhale. And on the exhale, we're going to round through the back, round through the neck. And bring the forehead closer to the heels. And gently coming out, let's get into the all four table top. So positioning your hands under the shoulders, your knees are with hip apart, and we're gonna rock gently back and Forth. When you're rocking forth, your shoulders go over the wrists and you're lifting your shins off the floor and pointing the toes. And then pressing back, you can go all the way into Balasana or halfway. And then rocking forward. I want you to start feeling the weight into the wrists. And pressing back. And one last round with the shoulders over the wrists. And then back into the neutral. Inhaling, let's arch through the back. Let's look up. Exhale, rounding 
looking at the navel, engaging with the solar plexus, inhaling. Remember, we want the shoulder blades to go like you want to bring them together that will naturally open the chest and you are arching and you're looking up you want that stretch in the throat and exhaling rounding so shoulder blades away from each other and you're trying to pull the mat away from yourself one more round in look up Exhale, round, and back into the neutral. Let's lift the right leg of the floor and let's lift that leg as further as you can with your knee bend. So you'll start healing your quads, your glutes engaged, and then let's drop it, let's lift it, and let's start making circular movements with the hip. And drop to the floor, the opposite leg. So first of all, Bend, keep the knee bent, and we're trying to reach as further as you can. You'll feel the sensations in the quads and in the glutes, squeezing the bum. If you're finding that you may want to go into the knuckles here and just support yourself, that's always an option. If you are finding that bearing weight on the wrist is just slightly discomforting or if you've got any conditions like osteoarthritis, osteoporosis and then drop the knee to the floor, lift up and open up. So start making circular movements with that hip. Feel the body, listen to the feedback of the body and drop the knee to the floor, tuck the toes, we're gonna lift the knees of the floor, pedal through the feet. Bring the weight forward, round through the back, come into the tippy toes and you actually going over the shoulders, over the wrist with the shoulders. So we start bringing weight to the front of the body and then coming into the down dog, lifting the right leg. We're going to open up, rotate the hip out, keep your fingers spread on the floor, keep pressing the mat away, twist comes into the waist, and drop the right knee forward, extend through the, your extended leg is really active here, ankle is extended, we are gently bringing the shoulders backwards, keep the chest open, sink into the hip, and breathe into that right hip. Let's lift the left shin of the floor and maybe finding your outer edge of the foot. If you want to square the body, you'll start feeling the pulling sensation in the quads you also start feeling it in, into your glutes. Okay, let's drop that foot to the floor, plant your hands, let's lift, open up, three-legged dog, look under the right underarm, drop the foot to the floor and lift the opposite leg, bend the knee, open to the left side of the body. Okay. 
and then bringing your weight forward dropping that knee to the front extending back leg and pressing gently with the tips of the fingers into the mat moving so we want to open up and we want to use your hands um, to push away so what's happening i'm creating an arch in the back i want to bring the shoulders away away from the ears rolling the back keep the chest open and then adding a flexion of your right knee your right hand to the outside that give you a quad stretch and if you want you can square if you want to twist and look over your right shoulder that's always an option or without the twist you keep trying to keep your chest square and drop the foot to the floor plant your hands prepare so use the momentum and kick back and open up looking under the left underarm drop the foot to the floor we're going to drop both of the knees to the floor open them quite wide and press into the child's pose balasana allow the upper body to be soft relaxed breathe into the belly we want to expand the abdomen on the inhale to push the belly out and on the exhale allow the belly drop to the spine and the next inhale all four bring the forearms to the floor tuck the toes lift the knees and press with the forearms so we are trying to keep pressing the mat away which will give you an opening in the underarms and we're building here the strength in the upper body by walking your feet slightly forward and then trying to close the gap between your heels so working on the hamstring stretch simultaneously finding that length in the spine and pressing the mat away navel going to be gently drawn in creating the vacuum dropping the knees to the floor bringing your legs to the sides extending them forward and preparing for the Udvadhanurasana so we're going to go into modified bridge pose where we are bringing the heels closer to the buttocks okay so you may want to use something in between your knees to ensure that you're not flopping out very common that i see in the yoga lessons is really opening here but i'd like you to squeeze it could be a block or it can be a ball something that you can keep your glutes engaged and keep squeezing it that ensures that you are strong in the uh, legs so you're not overwhelming the lumbar the lumbar part of the spine okay wiggle the shoulders ensuring that there is no obstructions with your head because we want to wiggle wiggle and support the weight of the body with the shoulders but your back the sorry your head the back of the head will be pressing into the mat 
and then maybe you're trying to lift the hips higher, keep squeezing the block between your knees and keep breathing. Simultaneously keep pressing with the arms into the mat. Strong pose, very young energy where we're gonna balance it out with a bit of a yin. Very gently bringing the buttocks to the floor, release your block away. We're gonna rock forward and we're going to extend the legs. Let's balance out that back bend. If you want to use the strap, you can use the belt or anything to just hook around over your feet. So we're going to go into Paschimottanasana, but we're going to be doing it with the back straight. So trying not to go and round from the top part of the back. Inhale first. And on the exhale, it's like hinging. So we want to hinge from the hips. That movement forward comes from the hip creases rather than from start lowering from the upper back. Your knees could be soft because the hamstring, if the hamstrings are tight, releasing that tension by softening through the knees. Your shoulders away from the ears. Inhale and exhale, maybe finding a little bit more space to fold forward. If you don't have strap to hand, you can always use your body, your outside edges of the feet. It could be the shins, it could be the ankles, it's something that you can get hold of and then you're using the body to pull the upper body forward. Traditional Ashtanga Vinyasa, we would be hooking the big toe with middle index finger and then maybe bringing the elbows to the side. And very gently releasing, bringing the right leg into the flexion, coming into Adha Matsyandrasana. So with your right side, we're gonna cross over the left leg. So you can keep your extended leg straight, or if there is no pain and the range of movement allows you to bring the heel towards the right buttocks without without giving yourself uh, an excruciated pain, then you're here, you're ready to go into the twist. Right arm up behind you, bringing the left elbow to the inside. So I'm using my right hand, very gently pressing into the mat that will give you a lift, a lengthen in the spine. And with your left elbow, you're pressing and you're trying to use this as a sort of leverage to really press into the thigh and open up. Keep your chest open, twist comes into the waist and twist comes into the neck. Looking over the shoulder, right shoulder. And back into the center, counter twist. Back into the center, the same on the other side. So your left leg into the flexion, cross, stay here and then rotate towards the left side or bring the right heel towards the left buttocks, bringing your left arm up behind you and the right elbow into the thigh. 
making sure that your shoulders are not pressed and glued into the ears. So we want to pull them lower and looking over the left shoulder. Exhale back into the center. Very gentle counter twist. Let's bring ourselves into the tabletop. Let's create the triangle shape and bringing the crown of the head onto the floor. So we're going to lift the knees of the floor and we're going to maybe walk slightly forward and we're going to stay here trying not to kick back and trying not to lift into the headstand this is a beginner's friendly flow if you're finding that maybe you want to lift one leg at a time and then the other leg at a time if you are experienced yoga practitioner and you're very comfortable with a headstand by all means go into the headstand if you're not staying here or maybe lifting the knees of the floor only if you are practicing the headstand drop the knees to the floor release the legs to the sides extend them forward and let's go straight for decompressing the neck and matsyasana the fish pose is a very common pose for decompression after the headstand or the um, the shoulder stand so the hands i'm currently my hands are facing down and arms my body is supported by the arms inhale lift point the toes you want to arch through the back maybe bringing the crown of the head closer to the body sorry closer to the mat And very gently coming out of the pose, releasing your arms to the sides and moving your feet slightly away, allowing the feet to flop out and bringing arms, palms to face up. We've done the whole circle, bringing yourself back into Shavasana, the course pose. If you're feeling that taking a few deep breaths through the nose and perhaps ex exhaling through the mouth, just get rid of that staled air in the lungs maybe shifting moving slightly if you feel that urge to move and then finding that pose where you can stay still your facial muscles relax the gaze is closed We are no longer actively inhaling and exhaling, so allowing the breath to return to its natural pace. Scan the body for any signs of tension.
that could be a subconscious tension that you're not even aware and Shavasana is the, your opportunity to bring the awareness into the body. Practice of conscious relaxation. Directing your focus into the body also brings your mind into one-pointed dimension. And whilst you are focusing on the body, the mind doesn't stray into the future or dwelling on the past. present moment that's unfolding here right now in front of you. Notice that moment. Notice the heaviness of the body melting into the mat. And very gently wiggle the toes, wiggle the fingers, draw both of the arms up above the head, give yourself a full body stretch and bring the knees towards the chest, curl into the ball, keep your gaze closed and roll into one side of the body with one of the hands press into the mat. Still the gaze is closed, we're still directing our awareness inwards, bringing yourself into the seated position that could be Sukhasana, easy pose, could be Ada Padmasana, Padmasana if you're practicing lotus or half lotus. Bringing awareness into the crown of the head. No expectations. Without forcing any feelings, any sensations, we're just bringing our awareness into the crown of the head. And very gently draw your palms in front of the heart. Bring your awareness into the heart center. And to finish the practice, bow forward. Namaste.